Hello, this is a short video presentation on mummification, just with the essentials that you need to know for the term exam. At the end of the presentation, there are a few questions, and these are the ones that you must be able to answer uh, in order to complete the exam. So I hope the video is helpful. So as I've explained in class, uh, mummification was used in Egypt to prepare dead bodies for the afterlife because they believed that they would need the body in the afterlife. Therefore, they uh, carried out a process to preserve the body as best as possible. There are two steps in mummification, as you see here. The first one is embalming, and the second one is wrapping. You need to know in the exam more the names of these two steps and a very brief explanation of, of each one. So embalming is when they prepare the body uh, after after the man has died, for burial, they clean it and they take out the organs. In the picture you can see them there putting special balm, like lip balm that girls use, on the body. Or in other words, for a balm would be oil. At first they wash the body with water from the River Nile, as I've also explained in class, and hopefully you remember now. They use water from the River Nile because it was convenient, it was right next to them but most importantly because it was sacred. In their eyes, it was some sort of religious or holy water. So they clean all the body with the water, then they apply the balm or the oil onto the skin. They do this at this stage for three main reasons. One, because the oil would have had a nice smelling scent or smell, which would cover up the smell of a dead body. Two, because it had antiseptic qualities which means that it cleaned and took away the bacteria that could be on the body, which could cause decomposition or rotting. And three, because it made the skin nice and soft and shiny and pleasant looking and elastic. When they finished that process, they took out the organs. In the picture, you can't see it that well, but they made a small cut in the side um, and pulled out the, the insides. So you, this is it here. The reason they made a small cut, as best they could, was so as not to damage the body or make it look bad. They want to keep the body as perfect as possible. And they also took out the brain. That's what you can see them doing here. As I explained in class, you can see he has this man here, kind of has a stick that he's pushing up into the nose and they would break the skull behind the eyes in order to enter the skull cavity and pull out the brain through the nose. Um, they took the brain out through the nose in order to keep the body looking as perfect as possible. Otherwise, they would have to open the skull, break it open, which would have been very damaging to the skull um, and harder, really. So they were quite clever. The other interesting thing about this process is that it tells us the Egyptians didn't really value the brain. They didn't think the brain was of any importance. They believed the intelligence and the soul were in the heart, which is why that was the only organ that they left inside the body. Once all the organs have been taken out and put to one side, they covered the entire body with this white stuff, which is a type of salt called natron. You absolutely must know the name of this salt and why it was used. The natron, the salt, um, absorbs liquid. So it takes all the leftover moisture that's in the body out. This is important uh, because otherwise the body will decompose and rot. So they had to dry the body completely so as to avoid decomposition. And they used natron, which is the technical name for this type of salt, to, to take out the moisture that's left. They would cover the whole body like this in natron and leave it for around 40 days so that all the moisture was extracted. The organs they took out, which we saw in the last video, they, they would also cover in natron in order to dry them. Um, and once those organs were dried, uh, you will see what they did with them in the next slide. Here we go. So these are supposed to represent the dried up organs. 
that had been left in natron for around 40 days too, but then they wrap them in linen. That's why they look kind of like eggs or balls in the picture. They wrapped the dried organs in linen and inserted them back inside the body. This was in order to keep the shape of the body because, as I explained, if you take all the stuffing out of a teddy bear, it's going to be flat and have no shape. Although the organs alone were not enough to maintain the shape because there were n was no blood in the body either. So they also used sawdust. You can look this up on word reference if you don't know the meaning. I did explain it in class, but you can look it up. And they also put sawdust inside around the organs just to keep it firm and tight and compact. Uh, of course, another reason that they may have inserted the organs back inside was because they thought they were useful for the afterlife. So now I want you to think, did they put all the organs back inside? Hopefully you answered no. And you can answer the next question. Then if you said no, which organs did they not put back inside the body? Hopefully you answered the stomach, the intestines, the liver and the lungs. Okay, those four organs they believed were, were very important organs. And so they did something different with them, which I will explain in the next slide. Well, these are the organs here in the jars. They put them inside these jars, which are called canopic jars. The canopic jars had this form, this shape. And each one represented a different god. One god was represented with the head of a falcon. That's this one here, which looked after the intestines. Another one looked after the stomach, which was the jackal. This is like a type of wolf dog. Again, look it up on word reference if you're not sure um, what type of animal it is. This one is the baboon. And finally, you can't see it very well, but it's the easy, easiest one to recognize, the human. Okay, so the falcon looked after the intestines, the jackal looked after the stomach, the baboon looked after the lungs, and the human looked after the liver. Uh, these organs were placed in the canopic jars after being dried out with natron, and then... They were placed inside the tomb with the mummified body. Okay, after all this process had taken place, uh, the, the embalming process, they could wrap the body. We're going to study this after the exam period. It won't enter in the exam. Apart from the fact you need to know there were two st stages. Firstly, embalming. Secondly, wrapping. Uh, here is just a small image of them wrapping the body and the material they would have used was linen. Hopefully you also notice here the canopic jars, okay? These could have been placed underneath the sarcophagus, which is like the coffin, or in the position of the compass, north, south, east and west, as each god, apart from having an animal, uh, was also represented by a direction. Now, here is the essential for the exam. What I need you to know are the name of the two steps of mummification, be able to explain the meaning of those steps, but very briefly, why they were drying the body at all, like what was the point of drying out the body, how they dried the body out, uh, which means the material that they used and the technical name for this material, why they put the oil on the body before and also after drying the body out, and finally what they did with the organs. That means all the organs, which four organs they didn't put back inside the body, uh, why they put those organs back inside the body, did they just shove them back in or, or what, and, and also about the brain. And that's it. Um, just to clarify this point, the reason they put the oil onto the body after drying it out, after applying the natron, was because if you take all the liquid and moisture out of something, it becomes so, so dry that it becomes delicate and therefore it could break. So the example I like to give is, think of leaves falling off the trees in autumn. Once they've been off the tree for a while, they turn brown and dry. And sometimes if you pick them up or try and touch them, they're so dry that they actually break into little pieces. 
So after 40 days of the body drying out, being covered with natron, uh, the skin could be so dry that it would break and that would therefore damage the appearance of the body. And so they apply a little bit of oil in order to elasticate and moisturize the skin so it doesn't break. Uh, apart from this question, I think all the others have been clearly answered in the presentation. So if you don't know the answer to any of them, go back and watch it again. Or you can go to the website that I have added on iTunes U, uh, www.ancientegypt.co.uk. Good luck studying and thank you for listening.